I'm going to take an example to demonstrate cluster analysis. So we'll use SAS for this. Cluster analysis is an unsupervised learning technique. So it's different from the supervised learning technique that we have learned in, uh, in the form of linear regression, logistic regression and so on. So unsupervised learning algorithms are used for unleveled data. So data for which there is no target variable or dependent variable. So if dependent variable is not available for a data, supervised learning algorithms such as logistic regression, linear regression, decision tree, uh, random forest and so on. So these algorithms are of no use when we do not have a target. So target variable is the one which levels your data with a continuous value or a categorical value. But many a times we do not have the luxury of having uh, you know, a level data with us. So, so how do we do analysis, uh, data analysis using unlevel data? So we'll use cluster analysis for that. I'm going to take an example to show you how we can use uh, different clustering techniques and what's the real world uses of clustering techniques are. So what happens in cluster analysis is that the algorithm combines similar observations into different groups without the help of, uh, you know, uh, the target variable or the level data. So it tries to combine um, you know observations on the basis of distance so if the uh, two observations are very close to each other now remember we could have different features so we could have a number of independent variables or number of features or number of different aspects of the data but there is no level as such so measuring distance between two observations is simply the Euclidean distance which measures the difference uh, or the distance between two different observations. So if the two observations are very close by, we call, uh, we, 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 we can, uh, or the algorithm can group them into uh, a same cluster. So the idea is that the distance between uh, observations within a cluster should be very low and the distance between observations uh, between uh, clusters should be high. So that's the idea. So having this in mind, let's take a data set and understand how we can use uh, clustering algorithm to analyze data. So clustering is used in a number of real world uses. Uh, one way is to, uh, you know, come up with different groups. So having different groups helps us in understanding different segments in our data. So in real world, let's for instance, we have data for customers and we don't have labels like what type of customers we have. So we can use clustering to come up with different groups or different clusters and then we can have different marketing or sales strategy for different clusters. So one of the uh, you know most popular use of clustering algorithm is uh, used by Google. So what Google does is it combines the different news items related to a particular event. For instance Brexit is one event or one um, you know news event so it uh, collects all the news articles on brexit based on different uh, you know features in so now this is uh, not a level data because news articles uh, as such are not uh, of any type right so nobody says that this is on brexit right so if based on different uh, features or different uh, data related to the articles google clustering algorithm it combines articles into different clusters, different groups, and it shows on different news groups, right? If you go to Google News, you will find, uh, you know, uh, news items have been clustered into different news uh, groups, right? So one event have five to ten news uh, news articles from, let's say, CNN or BBC uh, or Economic Times or Times of India and so on. Okay, so we'll take an example. Here, so we'll take uh, the iris data. It's a famous data. So those who haven't seen data, uh, iris data, let me show the data set to you. So it has got uh, 150 flowers, and we have different aspects, different features of the flowers: sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And then these flowers have been categorized into different species. So there are three species: Cetosa, Virginica, and Versicola. Now this data has got uh, the levels. So we our target variable in this case is species, which has got three levels. But in real world, 
we won't have this level data. So we'll drop this variable to make it more appropriate for clustering algorithms, right? So in case we have already a level, uh, there is no point using this data. So we'll, we'll drop this one. So we'll drop this here. So we'll use iris1 instead. Okay, so there we have got uh, 150 observations in all. And after we have dropped uh, species, we only have um, the four observations, right? So let's print iris1, which doesn't have species. Now you can see we only have the uh, independent variable, so the, dif the different features, the four features of the flowers. Now using these four features, we'll categorize them into different levels. And finally, we'll compare whether the actual categorization is correct uh, uh, as compared to the uh, one done by the clustering algorithm. Right? So that luxury we have because we already know the categorization here because it, it's a level data. We have made it uh, unlevel one, right? And that's a challenge, in fact, while building real world problems because you do not have a level as such prior to, uh, you know, using your clustering algorithm. All right. So in SAS, we can use several procedures. One of the, you know, important one is proc cluster. Syntax is very simple. You provide the input data and then you provide the method that is going to be used. There are several methods to be used. Now, the way clustering algorithm works is it combines the uh, data points. Okay. So first, what it does is that it combines two data points, the closest ones, right? And when two data points have been combined, uh, so each two data points will be combined. Now, we have cluster of two data points, right? Now, when it combines, it calculates the distance between two data points. Now, that's not possible between two uh, clusters, right? So one, two data points have been, uh, you know, combined into a cluster. We need to combine in the next step, we need to combine two clusters and calculating distance between two clusters is difficult. So, so there are different methods of calculating distance. You could take the maximum distance. That means the maximum distance between, you know, uh, a data point in cluster one and data point in cluster two, or you could take the mean or you know, we're taking the centroids, so that's why it's called centroids. So there are other methods as well. So you can try out uh, all the possible methods that you can use and see if the uh, clustering pattern differs. That helps actually to understand the data better. And the one that gives the best result is to be finally selected. We're going to print uh, uh, like that there is going to be uh, 150 so look clumsy so we'll print only 15 observation how the clustering happens and we'll understand in that way we'll uh, have the option called ccc which stands for cubic clustering criterion which is going to help us finding out how many clusters are going to be there finally so it helps us uh, understanding how many clusters uh, are going to be there pretty much like principal component analysis where we are trying to find out how many principal components. So what's the optimal principal component here? We have how many? Uh, so it, what's the optimal uh, clusters we're going to have? Out tree is being used to, you know, take the output of uh, of this and save it in a data called tree. We can give any other name. So let's run this. So the variables that we are using are the independent variables: petal length, petal width, and sepal length and sepal width. Now, slight uh, difference in the syntax. We are not explicitly mentioning the names of these variables. We are simply giving petal and it's going to take anything that starts with petal, right? The two variables with petal and two variables simply. Okay, so let's run this and we'll get the result and then we'll interpret the result. And then finally, we will visualize the clustering pattern and uh, we'll understand uh, whether it works fine or not. In the output, the first section will have the eigenvalues. Now, uh, eigenvalues actually, uh, in, in a rough sense, it explains the variation in the data. And the first eigenvalue would obviously uh, explain the maximum uh, variance. Okay, it's 92 percent. And then, when you go to the next one, combine the first one and second one, you are able to explain 97 percent. So the cumulative uh, uh, percentage of uh, uh, the cumulative percent of uh, variance being explained by these, you know, four variables, four independent variables, is 97%. And when you look at the third one, 
we are reaching at 99%, 99.5 in fact. So it gives us an indication that three clusters are quite enough to explain the different grouping patterns. Okay, so we're probably going to have three clusters. That's just an indication. We'll be sure by looking at the CCC plot. Okay, we also have the cluster history. Now, when you look at the cluster history, you're going to uh, you only have 15 observation. Of course, if you don't explicitly mention uh, to print 15, it's going to print all of them. Okay, so uh, so how uh, the clustering happens is that you know. You see if observation 57 have been combined with observation 112 and we have got one cluster right and then two clusters small cluster can be combined to form a bigger cluster like cluster 23 and cluster 24 have been combined to form another cluster now with each when we combine two cluster two observations we're going to have a frequency like how many observations finally we're going to have in that cluster so here two observations have been you know combined so we just have two observation in that cluster it forms one cluster but here two clusters have been combined so we obviously will have more than four right we have 34 observations in this case and so on so you can see that for all 150 observations and there will be several clusters so rec the recommendation that will be done by the uh, algorithm is that you're going to have several cluster uh, but question is what is the optimal one right so that's uh, what matters to us and we'll get to know the optimal number of clusters by looking at the ccc plot or what we known as cubic clustering criterion by looking at the cubic clustering criterion we'll get to know how many clusters we will finally have in our um, as part of the output so how we uh, get to know is by looking at the peak now you can see the peak is at three right if you uh, draw a perpendicular from this peak you will reach somewhere here 3, right? So here is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, right? So that's what uh, is in x axis. So, uh, so we are sure, we are clear here that we are going to have 3 cluster, which is going to explain uh, the variation in the, uh, in the uh, data. Now, question is, um, so what is the final output? Okay. What are we trying to look here? So we want to um, categorize each observation out of this 150 observations into a given or a single cluster. So there are three clusters to be there because we have found out that three clusters are going to be the optimal number of clusters. So we'll use PROC3 to, you know, uh, finally have this three cluster out of, you know, how many number of cluster it started out with right it started with many other clusters many number of clusters but from the diagnosis and by doing the diagnostic analysis we came to know that we only want three right so we'll use a keyword ncl equal to three which is going to uh, give us uh, the three optimal clusters and the output is going to be saved in a data set called out okay all right so let's uh, see what's there in the data set out okay so initially the clustering algorithm i guess it uh, gave us five cluster okay so this was the first that uh, by default it gave us five clusters that you know this data is suitable for five cluster but when we did the diagnostic analysis by ourselves we found that three is better than five because three is what is being explained is be able to explain 99.5% of the variation. So there's no point in having five clusters. You can see, you know, cluster three, cluster five, right? So that's maximum of five clusters being recommended. Whereas by limiting it to three, we are now able to categorize each flower into a given clusters. Like plus first flower have been uh, categorized to cluster one. Second with cluster two uh, sorry cluster one again okay uh, sixth observation is cluster three right now what these clusters are we do not quite know because this is unleveled data right so one of the uh, way we can you know analyze this data is that given the fact that we already have a level data we already have a species given to us we can compare the cluster over here with the species and see how accurate is the model but that luxury is not available in real world data where you do not have any uh, you know predefined classification 
So only what we have received from the clustering algorithm is going to be used finally. Right. And only when you get a feedback from the uh, production, you will get to know whether it actually works correctly or not. That's the way we validate that. Right. Um, so once that is there, we will uh, we will draw what is known as a dendrogram. Now that helps us find uh, you know visually understand how the clustering algorithm works. And it's very interesting. Let me show you. It's easy. Uh, syntax is like we are using proc tree to plot uh, how clustering uh, algorithm has worked. So clustering algorithm is very simple. It simply combines the nearby observations by measuring the Euclidean distance and we will get to uh, see the plot and understand um, how so what has happened is that we have this observation 150 observation in the y-axis and you will see the smaller bars by combined so that's the way it has combined finally it has got a big cluster right the final this one the one where I have the arrow mark now you will see that most of the uh, you know difference you can see is between this group the one that I can show here um, then the next one here the one uh, where we have the arrow mark and the one is here right so we can see visually that there are three different groups here right and that's why we have three clusters okay so that's one way of deciding whether uh, choosing three cluster is actually uh, okay or not. So this is one way of diagnosing the result also. We can use a scatter plot to uh, you know see the distribution of clusters once we have uh, you know categorized each observations. Now that we have clusters, we have categorized each observation into a given clusters and we have got three clusters. Let's do a scatter plot. So we'll use proc candix for this. Okay, and we'll use a class as a cluster because cluster is the one that's that's where we have the three cluster, right? So this is the variable you are going to use to do the visualization, and we'll use proc uh, sg plot to uh, you know to the, do the plot. Okay, so to do this scatter plot. So when we run this, we will. So this is the one. Now you can see there is a uh, difference in the three clusters, right? So this is one cluster, this is one cluster, and the red one is one cluster. Right? So there's a clear segregation of the three clusters. The slight overlap between the red one and the uh, the blue ones, but other than that, the green ones uh, are far away from the other ones. Observation. So they clearly it says that the clustering algorithms works fine in segregating the observations. Uh, so that's good views. That's one uh, good way of validating your result by you know creating visual plots. So where uh, in the real world we find uses of uh, cluster analysis? Many times we do not have target variable, and that's when we find analysis of data very difficult. Uh, if you already have a target variable, then it's good to go with uh, the uh, the supervised learning algorithms, which is going to do a great job. But if we do not have that luxury, we go for cluster analysis. It's used uh, heavily in market segment, in knowing market segments. Uh, many times uh, we have the data for consumer and do not know how many uh, segments or cluster of customers do we have in our portfolio. Right? To know that we uh, get different uh, features of customers, their income, their age group and so on and then we use clustering algorithm to come up with different groups okay and then we use uh, different marketing or sales strategy for different groups okay uh, news aggregation I have already said about that uh, consumer analysis whether uh, in, in uh, e-commerce industry whether in you know FMCG industry and so on is, is uh, heavily used